All right, so to really make sure our parser is going to do the work we need it to do, probably best to write some sort of test for it. And that's going to help us really automate things and make it way more simple of a process to go through and check for any discrepancies at the time it might come where Amazon changes their pages or something where some of the stuff we're scraping for doesn't actually come through. So what I'll do is actually create a new test that's going to just be a generic one. I'm going to add it to the whole test folder for now. So we'll say product parser test dot RB. And this one will just require our test helper. I am using mini tests. So all this stuff is kind of just vanilla rails as far as tests go. So up to you if you want to do anything else there, but let's start with defining the class product. You could generate this by the way, but I'm not, I'm just going to do it by hand. Vanilla app there. And we'll actually want to include our module. It's a big reason I use the module approach. I think it's easier to include. And if you remember, that's in our models folder in the concerns folder, we could just literally write that and it's in our test because we are using devise as well. We'll need to include a few helpers. So we'll say devise test integration helpers and save that down. That will give us the ability to like sign in a user with quick and easy one liners essentially. Um, we will want to do a setup method and one little gotcha is we need access to a, like an actual instance of a user and we'll use fixtures for that. So in your app, it might look a little different, but it, if you go into like your user's YAML file, you'll see the changes we've got at the moment or the, the base starting point for a user that doesn't have anything to do with like how our users are actually made or set up at this time. So we're going to just add some generic data. So say first name, John, we need this to get the test to run correctly. So I'm just going to go ahead and add the ability to do it An email. Like that. And we first name, you don't even honestly need the second one, but I'll show you just because there's two in there already. We'll just add it last name. Doe and email is Jane Doe an example. And you would normally want to have two different users, like say there's a different role or an admin flag or something just to test those kind of variances, but it's um, definitely not necessary with this specific test. I just wanted to show you how we could go approach doing the test using our parser as is. So we do need a URL to parse. I have one on my clipboard here. I'll add Amazon URL, paste that as a string. Make sure you put it in quotes. There we go. And I will go and round out that that's like our setup. We'll just have access to that Amazon URL. And first thing we want to do is a test the parsing doc. So we'll say test parse document is essentially what that's short for. So that means we'll do a lot what we did in our parser and set it all up, but we'll say product parser dot parse doc. And if you recall in our product parser, we have that method at, at the exposure of the module. So it's just like right, right here, ready to rock and roll. We'll actually make sure we can parse that URL. So we'll say Amazon URL, and then we could just say assert instance of nokogiri html document and then we'll pass in the doc as the instance we're going to assert all right and then below that we'll do a make sure we can get the attributes attributes again we'll need our parser so attributes we need a, a little local variable equals product parser and in our case we're doing amazon so you you want that strict test for amazon stuff so we'll say amazon and then get attributes and then it'll be Amazon URL. And then we'll just assert that each instance we want to get back or the, the data in our case is not nil. So then you could just do attributes title.
Okay, and then that's essentially it. You could mock this request so it's not so taxing to run this, but I'm gonna just run it as a basic test for now. Um, there are gems you could use that are like, they kind of mock an API and create it in a YAML file. I think it's called VCR. And it's basically just gives you a localized version of the API so you can, your test can run faster. You're not hitting API too many times. So we'll run this, say Rails, test, test, uh, product parser test.rb and see if it runs for us. Take, it might take a while just because it's got to go fetch the website and all the Amazon requests. Looks like it ran the errors. We've got seven assertions. So that means we've got two runs, no errors, no failures. So that's great. You might want to like, okay, do the TDD thing where this doesn't actually work. So, um, I don't know, run that, see if it actually breaks. Yeah. Failure. So that's good. It's nil. Got that. If we run it again, then we'll be able to see it is passing and we should be good to go to test that. So that's great. So that, that was essentially the part of this video that I wanted to get across. It's an important concept to have these in your app, especially if you're testing for something that's going to probably change routinely, like an, a web page, um, especially if you're scraping data. So that is something to consider. And in the next part, we'll round out the series and add that share link. That's going to really allow you to share a stack for the end user. I have it. You're seeing a futurized version of it in this local instance, because I had to redo this actual video, but uh, this will work in the next part. So I'll see you in it.